Hey guys, Connor here from CameraStore.com. We're out here on a lovely spring day to talk about point-and-shoot film cameras. Uh, these are, you know, some of the best entry-level options and a great camera to carry around as a second camera if you have an SLR or rangefinder. So we have some tips and tricks to share for you to get the best pictures out of your compact camera. So although point-and-shoots are super simple and designed to be used basically with little thought and as little experience as necessary, anybody should be able to take, pick one of these up and take great photos. It is important to understand the limitations of the camera. So one of the best piece of, pieces of advice we have is to read the manual and brush up on what the camera can and can't do. So the first thing we should talk about is ISO, and that's a, a measurement of the sensitivity of the film. Um, a, a basic consumer film like this Kodak Color Plus is going to be 200 ISO, so that's a relatively low ISO. The higher the number gets, the more sensitive the film is, and thus the better the film does in low light. Um, so one thing that, that happens a lot is we'll get customers that will shoot in low light with a 100 or 200 ISO film, and then the pictures don't come out well, uh, and they're disappointed, and you know, that's a, a harsh thing to see when you're new to a hobby. Uh, the first roll you shoot doesn't come out well. So it's important to understand the film that you're using, as well as the camera. Um, to make sure that, that you're putting it in position to succeed. Many modern cameras like this one will have what's called DX coding, where the camera can actually read the code on the film and automatically set the ISO. Um, some older cameras will have a manual uh, dial that you'll turn to set that number. For film that doesn't have this code, like we have Santa Color 100 it loaded in here, uh, most cameras will default to 100 ISO, but again, it's important to read the manual so you know what you're getting when you put no DX code film inside, like our Santa Color 100. One important thing to know about your point-and-shoot film camera is the shutter speed and aperture range. So this will determine whether or not you can get good exposure in super bright light or super dark light. Um, for example, this camera has a f4 or an f6.7 lens. That might not mean anything to you, but it's pretty slow. Uh, so this camera won't do well in low light. So my lens here is f6.7, which is pretty slow. So I'm going to brace myself against this pole so that I get hopefully a usable shot. Luckily, most point-and-shoots come with a flash, so the next good piece of advice is to trust the camera when it needs the flash. You can, on some models, force the flash off, but it's a pretty advanced technique, so for your first couple of rolls especially, just let the camera do the thinking. That's sort of what they're designed for. One important thing to note is that with a slow lens like this, aside from exposure control, you'll lose depth of field, so a wider lens with a lower aperture number will give you more of that separation from your subject to the background and more of that creamy out of focus area that is pretty popular, especially in portraits. Uh, cameras like this are not really capable of that. Uh, aside from not having control of it, uh, an f6.7 basically will give you a pretty wide area of focus, so the background won't be super blurry. One important feature of most point and shoot cameras is a focus lock. So if you don't want your subject to be centered in the frame, what you can do is basically focus on the subject, half press the shutter, and you can maybe hear, it's a very slight noise, but there's also a green light shows up on the back to tell me that focus is confirmed. And then I can recompose to move Nico off to the side and trust that the camera is gonna get the proper focus. So if you don't do that, this camera actually has a, a dot in the center of the viewfinder and most of them will. That'll tell you where it's focusing. Um, otherwise, you're gonna end up with photos focused way in the background behind your subject. So I actually used the focus lock just there to focus on the subject in the center and then recompose to put it on the third line on the left and the bottom. One blessing and curse of point and shoots is their lack of manual controls. So it's literally a point and shoot. You point the camera at whatever and you shoot away. Uh, most of them, you don't have control over any settings, so you don't get to choose what the picture looks like. The camera does it for you. Just as important as the camera is your choice in film. So there's tons of different film options from professional color to consumer color to black and white. And each one will have its own sort of unique uh, structure of grain, of sharpness, of color. 
So like the difference between Kodak Ektar and Kodak Gold, which is like a professional color film versus a consumer one, uh, you'll see a noticeable difference in, in the vibrancy of the color, the sharpness of the grain, and how it resolves highlights and shadows, so the dynamic range. And then between color and black and white, obviously, if you're losing all of the color when you go to black and white, but you get an extra sort of tonality between the darkest darks and the uh, brightest highlights. So, and then different black and white films will also have different amounts of contrast, different thicknesses of grain. So it's really worth playing around with different film types and seeing what works best for you and what works best in different situations. So, like I said before, high ISO films are going to be really good in low light, uh, and struggle in bright light, whereas low ISO films will be the opposite. They'll do great on a bright sunny day like this, but will struggle if you go inside or try to shoot them at night. As with all cameras, it's important to make sure it works before you start using it. Luckily, point-and-shoot cameras are all automatic and all electronic, um, so basically putting a battery in is most of the testing that you can do as just a consumer. Um, so it's good to carry around a few batteries if you're going to secondhand stores or wanting to test a camera. Uh, check the article in the description for some specific battery types that we recommend carrying around if you're hunting for point and shoots. Uh, but if you get frustrated that, you know, a camera is broken or you just want to be 100% sure that it works, it's good to check out uh, sellers that actually test their stuff. There's a few different options all around the world, but we're a great place to start. We have hundreds of point and shoots on the site that all have been tested and checked. Another thing to note is that inside your viewfinder, there may be a mark for close focus. So if you see sort of frame lines in the viewfinder and then a second set of frame lines that are a little bit inside, that's giving you your close focus mark. And that's because when you look through the viewfinder, you're not actually looking through the lens. So that slight difference actually makes the viewfinder not accurate to what the lens is here, especially when you're close, focusing close up. Shooting with a point and shoot is basically an exercise in compromise. There are good things, there are bad things. It's easy and simple, but you lose all that control. So as we've mentioned, it's important to understand the camera and understand the film before you go out shooting with a point and shoot so that you'll get good shots with it. Uh, as a newcomer, these are probably the best way to get into film. And as a more experienced photographer, they can be great secondary cameras or quick party cameras to take fun snapshots. They're great cameras all around, it's just important to understand their limitations. So yeah, hopefully this video has helped you. Check out the article below for some more detail on maybe the technical aspects of what make these, ca these cameras different than others. Uh, I've been Connor from CameraStore.com. Thanks, we'll see you in the next one.